here. I've been thinking about the next garden season, new methods I want to try, how to fix some of the problems I had last year, and what I want to grow. Once the new year comes, it's only a couple of months before I can get my hands in some dirt again and start preparing my garden for spring. Last year was my second year with the garden. I'm still getting to know what grows well where and the different ways I can improve my soil. Because I garden the naked organic way, I am always looking for effective but inexpensive ways to control pests and have healthy soil and plants. In the past couple of years, I have tried neem oil solutions and even used the Korean organic method, Jadam. I love some of these methods because they cost very little to no money and are effective at enriching the soil and keeping pests away. But this year, I plan to do things a little differently. While Jadam was inexpensive to make, it does take a bit of time and can be hard to get the ratios right when I'm making smaller batches of some of their solutions. I ended up having to throw some of it out because it got super moldy in storage. I had been using urine in the garden too, which is a great natural fertilizer, so I plan to do that more this year but I'll also add wood ash to it for the plants that really need an extra boost in nutrients. Using urine in the garden may sound gross, but it's free and makes a fantastic fertilizer when you dilute it with water and add in other amendments, such as wood ash. Some of you may remember that I made a biochar kiln out of an old oil burner that we got secondhand from a neighbor. Up until now, I had a couple burns in it, just to make sure it was cleaned out, using some of the chopped wood we had lying around. But I was finally able to make my first batch of biochar. go and journey where the diamond grass is flowing I'm run across the valley beneath the sacred mountain I'll wander through the forest where the trees of leaves of prisms that break the lighting colors that no one knows the names of When each 
time I'll go and wait beside a legendary fountain till I see her form reflected in its clear and jewel waters. And if you think I'm ready, you may lead me to the chasm where the rivers of our vision run into one another. I'm just waiting for this thing to burn and it's taking of course a while and I didn't want to leave it unattended in case I need to add more kindling but it looks like it's burning pretty good right now which is good it's nice and hot in the kiln and the cedar logs are finally starting to burn which is a good thing that's what I want <laughs> hi no no. I plan to use biochar in the garden this year, mixing it with organic compost. I cannot wait to see how my garden responds to it. When I first moved here, I got right to work on building the garden. But one of the things I did not do was test the soil. Testing your soil can help you learn more about what it needs to be healthy. While I know they did not have this kind of technology a few generations ago, it's something that I want to explore. So I started to grab a couple of samples of my soil and took them to a local testing facility. It takes a few weeks to get the results back, but I'll be curious to see what my soil may be lacking or if the pH is too high. They'll also give me suggestions based on the results of what I can add to my soil to get it just right. Getting my soil in a good healthy state will not only help my plants be stronger and healthier, but it'll also help keep the pest problems down naturally. In the past, I've used organic homemade solutions such as neem oil to keep the pests away. But it didn't always work and can be a lot to manage, especially when it rains a lot and I have to keep reapplying it. I then switched to one of the Korean organic jadam methods, but it was again a bit time consuming to make 
And getting the ratios just right was tricky on the smaller scale that I needed for my garden. And I still had some pest issues. So this year I plan on using some of these methods, but sparingly. Because when you use sprays that kill harmful insects, they will also kill beneficial insects. A healthy garden is the best defense against pests. So instead, I'm going to focus more on the health of my soil and plants using some of the things I mentioned before and other things like seawater and rock minerals. I'll also grow a more diverse garden, mixing my plants and rotating my crop every year. I notice that the more diverse garden I have, the less pests I have. Another thing I'm looking at is adding more beneficial insects to my garden, such as praying mantis, ladybugs, and nematodes. Adding more flowers to my garden will attract many of these beneficial insects to my garden naturally, so I plan to do that this year. As I begin to prepare for the next garden season, I'm staying warm indoors and enjoying the slow pace of winter. It seems as though many begin to step into the new year with an overwhelming urge to make changes, set new goals, and put them into action. But winter is actually the time of year to slow down and go within. Start planting the seeds of what you want to happen this year or what you want to change, but start putting it all into action come spring when the energy shifts. Winter is a time of hibernation. And we, as an organic human species that is part of nature, must mimic this important part of the cycle. We must all find our way back to being in tune with the natural world around us, observing and listening to what it's trying to tell us about ourselves each and every day. When we do, we feel a shift within ourselves and can return to a more harmonious state of being. One where the birds singing don't go unnoticed, where the trees begin to reach out to touch us, where the rain falls to cleanse our hearts and our souls. <laughs>